Eternal Father, we thank you and we give you all praise today. You and you alone are worthy. We ask this morning that you would open our minds, help us to hear, to understand your word today and then help us to grasp its application in our daily lives. Help me today to share it right and help these your people to hear it right. That's my prayer. I pray in Jesus' name, and the church said amen. I would invite you to follow along with me with your Bibles this morning. The title of this message is How Righteousness is Obtained. Because a person makes a statement does not mean that the statement the person is making is true. And you have to be able to discern the difference between truth and error. When we are judged by Jesus on that great judgment day, we will be judged as either righteous or wicked. There is no in-between. In John chapter 5, Jesus says, the day will come when all who are in the graves will hear his voice. They that have done good unto the resurrection of the just or the righteous, but they that have done evil or wicked unto the resurrection of damnation. So, Whether a person is righteous or wicked is very important. How, how that determination is made is the issue. And I want to share with you from the Bible what God's Word declares. Now, because a person makes a statement doesn't mean that the statement is true. Do y'all hear me? There is one person, I said one, How many? There is one person who is inerrant, who is without fault, who is sinless, who is all that, and his name is Jesus. No one else rivals Jesus. He is 
the expression of God when Jesus speaks it is the mind of God being expressed amen so everyone must be measured against Jesus I said what everyone and Jesus was validated by God the Father that's the resurrection without it Jesus would not have been validated but when God raised Jesus from the grave God validated Jesus now if Jesus had not been raised from the grave from the dead we would not know if God was real because the one who told us about God says that no man has ever seen God but the Son and he has revealed him to us and so without the resurrection we would not know if this God that we talk about Abraham Isaac and Jacob was real and so the resurrection proves God is real Jesus quoted Moses, which means Moses is real. Jesus quoted this, what we call Hebrew scriptures or Old Testament, which validates its authenticity. If Jesus would not have quoted it, then we would not know that it was valid or real or the expression of God but because Jesus used it in his earthly ministry and quoted it that means it's validated so what validates the Old Testament Jesus and Jesus said I did not come to destroy the law somebody say amen, amen. and so when you boil everything down for us humanity Jesus is the validation so whatever he says how a man obtains righteousness is what we need to focus in on and that is the truth now, I want you to follow along with me the first thing that needs to be done is, of course, define what the word righteousness means. And the word means to think and act, your mind and your actions. I want to say this because a lot of people get deceived. And the reason is because they listen to what people say. And Jesus never told you to go off of what people say. Jesus said this, with their lips they honor me, but their heart is far from me. He's teaching us that people can say all kind of stuff. Then he also teaches us, don't be deceived by wolves. He did not say you would know them by what they say. Because a wolf knows what to say. He said, you will know them by their actions, their fruit. If a man is beating on you and then turns around after he gives you a good whooping 
and tells you, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, you might not want to believe what he says because his actions have not proven him out yet. And so the next time he gets angry, all his words will go in the trash and he will do what's really in his heart. That's why you can't go by what people, what? Say. Because anybody will say anything to get out of a tight. Am I right? They'll promise you the world to get out of a tight, but their heart is not with you. It's far from truth. And so, it's not just thinking, but acting. So, so a person who is righteous not only thinks right, but acts right, or in accordance with divine or moral law. person standing up quoting the Bible is absolute, it means nothing. It's living it. Say amen. It's living the scripture. When God becomes uh, the driving force in an individual's life, it will show in their actions. And so real righteousness is, is thinking and acting. Say thinking. Say acting. Stop going off of what folk say and realize it's thinking and acting in accordance with divine or moral law. Now, in order for it to be divine, it means it, that law cannot come from man. It's got to come from God because God alone is divine. Say amen. Now, let me help you. The divine moral law given by God is known as the Ten Commandments. We know that. We understand that. It's called the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue, and it's found first in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 14. And we went over that. And for your... Uh, for your uh, uh, refreshing, I would invite you to read that at your leisure. As a matter of fact, I would invite you to post it somewhere in your house because those, uh, those laws, that divine moral law never changes. Say never. It is always in force. The only one, now listen to this, that can change or end the divine moral law of God that he gave in Exodus 20 is God himself, no one else. God spoke it, that means God has to revoke it. It can't come through a man's mouth because it didn't come through a man's mouth when it was given. It came through what? God's mouth. God spoke it. Therefore, if it's going to be revoked, God would have to come down and cancel it out and say, okay, that's over with. We're living by something new. Until that day happens, and that day will happen. And I'll show you where it will happen. Until that day happens, we are still under the divine moral law of God given in Exodus chapter 20. We are obligated to obey it. Now listen to me carefully. It is again restated by Moses, the servant of the Lord, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 6 through 22. And in verse 22, it says, He spoke these ten commands to the people, and he added no more. He spoke it, he added no more, and he wrote those commands in stone. Two tablets, 
to tell us it's written in stone and it's not changing. Now stay with me. Please. After God gives to humanity his divine moral law that we are to follow on Mount Sinai, we are told the following. Now listen to this carefully. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, if you got your Bible, turn there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 and 25. This is so important. This is so important because it answers the question how righteousness is obtained. It answers the question. Now listen to what it says. Verse 24, And the Lord our God commanded us Verse 24, to obey all these decrees, the ten, say the ten, and to fear or to reverence and respect him. Let me say it again. To reverence, respect him. So he can continue to bless us and to preserve our lives as he has done to this day. And verse 25, and I have the New Living Translation, the Amplified, the New American Standard, the NIV, and the King James. All different translations of verse 25. Now, for the sake of, of time, read starting at verse 25, each one. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands... Stop. Everybody say, when we, when we obey. Now start at the, start at the beginning. Read For it. we... We will be what? Counted as righteous. As what? Righteous. Y'all, as what? Righteous. When we... Obey. Say obey. obey. Everybody say obey. obey. I want you to understand this has got nothing to do with believe. Come on now. There's a difference between believe and obey. Yeah. Say amen. amen. This ain't got nothing to do with what you believe. This got everything to do with what you what? Okay. Obey. Read it again. For we will be counted as righteous. When we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. Read the next one. It will be considered righteousness for us, that is, right standing with God, if we are careful to observe all this commandment before the Lord our God, just as he has commanded us. We must be careful to observe. The word observe means to do. Read the next verse. It will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all this. To commandment. observe. We must be careful to what? Observe. Say observe. Observe. Observe means what? To do. All this commandment before the Lord our God just as he commanded us. Read the next one. And if we are careful to obey. Careful to what? Obey. I can't hear you, congregation. Obey. obey. Careful to what? Obey. Say it again. Obey. Okay, this is all about obedience. Come on 
now. This ain't got nothing to do with what you believe because you can believe something and do nothing. Isn't that right? You can believe something and do opposite of what you believe. You can say, I believe cancer if I smoke, I can get cancer. You can believe that and still be what? Smoking. So just because you believe a thing doesn't mean nothing. It's what you obey. And on the package it says, stop smoking. Don't smoke. Amen. Smoking will kill you. Stuff like that. Am I right? Now if you believe that on that package, you will stop what? Smoking. Well, just because you believe it doesn't mean you'll stop smoking. But when you obey that command on that package, you won't smoke anymore. Say amen, somebody. Amen. There's a difference between what you believe and what you obey. There's a difference between what you believe and what you what? Obey. All right. Good. Keep reading. Last and, one. And if, oh. Read and, it again. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. So righteousness is connected with obedience. Yes. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Read the last one. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Now, I want you to listen carefully. Once God gave the law in Exodus 20, it is clear from Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25. Now please listen. An individual's willing obedience. Say willing. Willing obedience to it. And I haven't twisted nothing. I just gave you every version that I could find. And every version tells you that your obedience to it will determine whether or not you are righteous. Say amen. amen. Obedience to what? Divine moral law. The ten. It would determine whether or not they were righteous. Obedience. Say obedience. Now stay with me. In Matthew chapter 22. Now let's deal with Jesus. Jesus teaches us. Jesus. The greatest moral law we are to obey is loving God by obeying, by willingly obeying him. You can say I love you, but Jesus said if you love me, obey me. Say amen, somebody. The highest moral law, read Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40. Listen to this carefully. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your heart. With all your soul. All your soul. And with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus also teaches in Luke, now stay with me, chapter 10, verse 25 through 28, obeying God and loving your neighbor. And loving your what? Okay, let me help you. Loving your fellow man. Loving your fellow man as yourself. As yourself is how one inherits eternal life. Jesus teaches this. Read. 
please. Luke 10 and 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Stop. What was the question? What shall I do to what? Inherit eternal life. This is amazing because most, most supposed Christians who say they are disciples of Jesus, if you ask them what did Jesus teach was the way to inherit eternal life, most people don't have an answer. They don't know. And yet it's right there in black and white. Read. Verse 26. He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Remember, Jesus tells the man to go to the law. Tell me what the law says. Read. 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Now, Jesus said you answered right. You gave the right answer. But knowing it and doing it, two different things. Come on, say amen, somebody. You can know something and not do it. But here's what Jesus teaches. If you want to inherit eternal life, You've got to obey God, obey his ten, and love your neighbor. Now, here we go. As yourself. Jesus said, if you'll do this, you'll live. Now, let me help you. We were brought here, our forefathers were brought here in ships, in slave ships. Let's tell the truth. We didn't ask to come here. We were captured in the land of our origin. And we were brought across an ocean to be nothing more than cattle, to be slaves, to be treated as nothing more than a possession. Now, these people who perpetrated that atrocity were wicked to the core. And please hear me carefully. There is no way you can have any God inside of you and do what was done to a people like what was done to our forefathers. Somebody needs to say amen. Now, I know it's tough to hear. I don't know why. It's the truth. But all the while, we were being treated as dogs and cattle. They were preaching and teaching to us the Bible. Now, how in the world can you teach and preach the Bible and somehow Skip over, if you want to inherit eternal life, love your fellow man as yourself. Because none of them were willing to be enslaved. None of them were willing to be treated like cattle. None of them were willing to be dogged out, mistreated, raped, pillaged, and plundered. Come on, talk to me. So how in the world do we have a people who are standing up and telling us about this God but disobeying the God that gives the word if you want to have eternal life, treat that person of color like yourself and you're unwilling to treat them like yourself. You're treating them like nothing more than a possession. That makes no what? Unless, in their mind, there's another way that allows me to treat a person 
as nothing more than a possession, there's got to be some other explanation. Come on, talk to me. Because according to what we have just read, it's not what you believe, it's what you do. And Jesus said, in order to inherit eternal life, you've got to treat your fellow man like you would treat yourself. The whole institution of slavery would have been abolished if people would have really believed what God's word taught. The whole institution of, 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 of enslavement would have been abolished if there was a real revival in the land. Are y'all hearing me? If people would have come back to the teachings of Jesus and realized if he died for your sin, if he's your savior like you say he is, and you are to obey him, how is it that you can skip over this and this? regard your neighbor as yourself listen to me you can't treat people with contempt and be okay with God you better hear me I promise you before you can ever get to God there are people in the way are y'all hearing me there are people who separate you and God. And like John H. Whittington used to say, you cannot step over me to get to God. And some folks think they can have an intimate, personal relationship with God and yet treat their fellow man like dirt. You cannot hate people and then be approved of God. Do y'all understand that? Love God and then love people. And let me help you. You haven't seen God, but you see people. So I have to love God by loving people. And when I don't express my love for God by loving people, I'm not expressing my love to God. Are y'all hearing me? This is what Jesus teaches. Jesus tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. How important is it? He says it's the first thing you ought to pursue. Kingdom and righteousness are to be pursued, what, simultaneously. Are y'all hearing me? You cannot have kingdom and not have righteousness. Are y'all hearing me? Righteousness is necessary in order to inherit the kingdom. In Mark 12, it gives the discourse of Jesus communing or being questioned by that same lawyer. And the lawyer turns around and says, you have answered correctly when Jesus says to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those two, upon those two hang all the law and the prophets. The lawyer in Matthew 12, the, the extended version of this says, you have answered right, master. This is what the lawyer said to Jesus. And the lawyer turned around and said, for to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself is more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices a man can ever give. What is, what, and, and you know what Jesus turned around and said? He said, you have answered wisely. And then he turned around and said, you're not far from the kingdom. He said, you close, brother. You, you right up against it. Because you're understanding that it's not about sacrifices and burnt offerings and all that mess. God could care less about that. But what does God care about? How we treat each other. That's what God cares about. 
To seek God's righteousness would demand a person to adhere to God's divine moral law as stated in Exodus chapter 20. If you won't beat your mother, why would you beat your wife? Oh, Lord Jesus. If you ain't willing to hit your mother upside the head when she don't tell you what you want to hear, why would you do that to your wife? You see, you're not loving your wife as yourself. Are you hearing me? We have to love people as ourselves. Thank God for correction. Amen. Say amen. amen. At times, we need to be what? Corrected. Say amen. At times, we need discipline. What is discipline all about? It's an expression of love. Because when you don't discipline your child, the Bible says, listen, just, just listen. He that spareth the rod hateth his child. If you are unwilling to bring discipline where you see someone is off the rails, and if you keep looking at it and ignoring their behavior, that is a sign that you're, you don't love that child. You don't love that person. You love yourself more than you love them because you don't want them to get angry with you. Who cares about angry? Tell the truth, amen. And bring discipline where discipline needs to be brought. To seek God's righteousness would demand a person to adhere to God's divine moral law as stated in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 6, which is a summary or summarized by Jesus in Matthew chapter 22, verse 40. Upon these two hang all the law and the prophets. How can they, how can a people sidestep doing what's right in order to be declared righteous? How can that happen? How, how is it possible? Well, the differing views as to how a person, now listen to this, obtains righteousness is a result of the writings of Paul and the commentaries written by European theologians telling us how to view them. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, did y'all hear what I just said? I want you to go back, read Matthew chapter 5 on that sheet. Do you have it? Now, I want y'all to listen to this. Please hear me when I say this. Jesus did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. He came to fulfill. Read. This is out of Jesus' mouth. Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus said, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. I did not come to what? Abolish the law. Say abolish. Abolish. You know what that means? Do away with. Keep reading. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I came to accomplish their purpose. Now listen to what he says. Verse 18. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear. Stop. Stop. Until heaven and what? Do what? Say disappear, y'all. What, what did he say? Not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Now, read Revelations, the next verse. Read that. Revelations 21 and 1. Now, I told you I would explain to you when the law of Moses, the moral divine law, is done away with. Read this. Revelations what? 
21 and 1. 21 and 1. Read. Then I saw a new heaven. A new heaven. And a new earth. And a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. Now, read verse, the, the prior verse that Jesus said. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear. Until heaven and earth what? Disappear. Read Revelations 22. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and what? New earth. Keep reading. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. Had did what? Disappeared. Oh, so we, you telling me that the law is in place? Until we get a new heaven and a new earth? That's exactly what God's word says. I don't understand why we don't put this together. You, we, listen, the law is here till we get a new what? And with that new heaven and new earth is a new people. Say amen. And that's when righteousness will be ingrained in us and there will be no possibility for humanity to ever sin. But that ain't today. Say amen. Please listen to me. The differing views as to how a person obtains righteousness is the result of the writings of Paul. Paul. Who is Paul? Who is he? He's a disciple. Or, or, or he wants to be or a follower of Jesus, right? So what could Paul write that would cancel out God? Did y'all hear me? How can anybody cancel out God? Can't nobody tell you another way besides what God says. I don't care who he is. Are y'all still with me? What does Paul teach? in his writings. Well, maybe this is the reason why they could do what they did to us and not blink an eye. Are y'all hearing me? What does Paul teach in his writings concerning how righteousness is obtained? How do they differ, if any, from what Jesus and Moses taught? Listen to this. Paul's teachings on how righteousness is obtained. Listen to this. Romans chapter 1. This is what Paul says. This is a letter he wrote to the Romans. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Uh-oh, we got this new word called what? Believes. First to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel or in his good news, now listen to this. The righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith. For it is written for first to last, just as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, now we're talking faith. And we're not talking doing or obeying. Now keep reading. Faith in Habakkuk 2.4 means moral fidelity. It doesn't mean the same thing that Paul says it means in Romans 1.17. But listen to this. Therefore, listen to what Paul says. No one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. What? What? Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. And then he says this, but now, apart from the law, well, now we're separating the law, taking the law out. Now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. I put, oh, really, where? I haven't found it. This righteousness 
is given through faith. This is what Paul said. This is the righteousness now. All you got to do is have faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. And then Paul says, therefore I, not we, but I conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Do you know what that just did? That opened the door for wicked people to stay wicked. And the only thing you got to do is believe what? In Jesus. It allows racist to continue to be racist. Because now, according to Paul, all you got to do is believe that Jesus is. That he died for you. He takes away your sins. You know what that does? That creates a world just like we have today. Where no one is doing what's right. And we fight over our beliefs. And we say, if you don't believe this way, you're going to hell. It ain't about how you live. That's what this has done for us. Now it's all about what you believe and not what you do. Well, who in the world has the power to take away what God says? And then who has the power to take away what Jesus teaches? And yet, because somebody put it in this, we say, oh, it's got to be God. And I keep trying to tell you, just because a person says something don't mean it's true. If it doesn't line up with what Jesus says, it's not true. Therein lies the problem. That's why you think it ain't about how you live. It's about whether or not you believe. And God has been trying to tell us, just because somebody said it doesn't mean it's true. Are y'all hearing me? Listen to me carefully. Paul is not judging nobody. You will never stand before Paul. The only person you will ever stand before is the Lord Jesus Christ, and you might want to do what he teaches. Can the church say amen? amen. Listen, I'm going to explain a little bit more next week, but please understand, I don't care who it is, no one can take away what God declares. No one. And we are obligated to know the truth and teach what the truth now apart from the law okay well that's not what god says where you are stand to your feet How many of y'all have experienced 